Alright, so this is the example video for working out the problems from Geometry Quest number one. The first one wants us to figure out which of these expressions is equal to negative seven. So let's do that. We're going to have to work each one of these out to figure out which is equal to negative seven. Um, working the order of operations, uh, I can see the parentheses comes first. Um, I know that I can work out these exponents at the same time as well as this division because, well, that's, that's all going to happen um, kind of separately from each other. So 3 squared is 9, minus 11, minus. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. Uh, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Uh, 9 minus 11 is negative 2, minus 3, minus 2, negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5, minus 2 is negative 7. So there we go. A will work. B. 2 to the third is 8 minus 5 minus what's in the parentheses. 7 plus 1 is 8. Negative 10 divided by 5 again is negative 2. 8 minus 5 is 3 um, minus 8 is negative 5, right? Like we could just do 8 minus 8, we'd cancel each other out. And so we'd wind up with negative 5. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. So B also works. 3 to the third is 27 minus 25 minus 7 minus 2. Uh, 7 minus 2 is 5, so we're going to be subtracting 5 there. Minus, uh, you know, a negative 12 divided by 3. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. 27 minus 5 is 2 minus 5 minus 4. Uh, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Right, so this also works. I would guess that this one's not going to work, but I'll work it out. Two squared, yeah, two squared is four, plus one, minus two plus eight is ten, so it's minus ten. Negative six divided by two, negative three. Four plus one is five, minus let's just say minus thirteen. Negative ten minus three is negative thirteen. Five minus thirteen equals negative eight, so that's not going to work. Okay. And scrolling down, number two, find the midpoints of the line segment, right? So uh, that works out, as we discussed before, as the average between the x points is going to be right in the middle of those two x coordinates. So to find the average for the x value, I add the x values together, 9 plus 3, and divided by 2, that's the average. Right? If you think about that, the, the middle between 3 and 9 will be exactly the average between 3 and 9, and that's what we have there. Uh, so, um, that equals, but comma, because comma for the y value is going to go here, that's the average of the two y values. So, negative 11 plus negative 3, so the negative 11 minus 3, divided by 2. And we'll just work this out in our heads. 9 plus 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. Uh, negative 11 minus 3 is negative 14 divided by 2, negative 7. You can work that out by, by drawing a graph. You can work it out by just counting it off. Um, uh, whatever makes the most sense to you, whatever works best. But uh, this is nice because no matter how big the numbers are, this will still work. Okay, so uh, a lot of people tried to find the, the midpoint, it seemed, between these two points, but the directions there say the distance, right? And that's as simple as uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. I saw a lot of people draw pictures, so we can draw a quick picture, and the picture will just show us so we need the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, 12, 10, so let's say 12 is about there. 10 is a little shy of that, so there's a point at 12, 10. Um, and the other one at negative 12, negative 8. Negative 12, that's going to be right back there. A little bit short of 10 will be negative 8. So that's negative 12 and negative 8. And so we want to find this distance between these two points, which show we can show right here that we have a triangle. So really we just have to find the length of this side and of this side, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. This side is, uh, well, this much is 10 and another 8, so that's 18 for that side. This side is 12 and another 12, so that's 24. So a squared, I don't know why I wrote a 12 there, a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared. But remember, whenever you're using the Pythagorean theorem, c squared, or c, is always in reference to the longest side, the hypotenuse. Okay, so if your diagram is rotated or modified in some way, keep that in mind. Uh, 18 squared is 324 plus 24 squared is 576. That equals c squared. We add those together. We get 900. We're going to take the square root of both sides to figure out what c is, and c must be 30. And it doesn't have any units, it's just here on the coordinate plane, so it's 30 units, whatever those might be, from point A to point B. All right. And scrolling down. So we're going to be testing here our knowledge of, uh, of um, angle pairs. Do we know those relationships, uh, supplementary, complementary, and vertical angles? Um, let's find out. So the example for this first problem says that angle AFB is 61 degrees. You can see the little A there. AFB, that's this angle, so that's 61 degrees. Angle BFC, BFC, measures negative 8x plus negative 11 degrees. So how do these add up with each other? Well, we can see that right here is a 90 degree angle, okay? Because we know that this is a straight uh, ray and this is a straight line all the way across. This is 90, so this must be 90, okay? That's uh, supplementary angles, right? They add up to 180. So 61, right, plus negative 8 plus a negative 11 or negative 8x minus 11, um, the, those two must add up to 90. So we could just write that equation, 61 plus negative 8x minus 11. That must come out to be 90. You could do it all sorts of different ways. 90 minus 61 is equal to this. You might just figure out, oh, this has to be you know, 29 degrees. Right? So 29 degrees must be equal to negative 8x minus 11, which I'm going to find out right now. Right, When I subtract 61 from both sides, negative 8x minus 11 is equal to 29. I'll add 11 to both sides. Negative 8x is equal to 40. Divide by negative 8 on both sides, and x is equal to negative 5. Okay, we're referring to the same diagram now, but for number five, I'm going to erase this stuff that we used previously. And if you hear any thumping noises, it's just my kids running around. Um, AFB, AFB, same angle, is 57 degrees this time. What is the measure of C, F, D, C, F? D. Hmm, what's the connection between AFB and CFD? Nothing directly, but BFC, we know how big BFC must be because AFB and BFC must add up to, again, that 90 degrees right there. So if that's true, it must be 33 degrees, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's helpful, because sometimes when these, with these diagrams, not only ankle pair diagrams, but any diagram, it's good to just fill information that you can figure out, and we can figure that out. Um, we can also figure this out, but uh, that's already obviously 90 degrees. We could say that, hey, these are vertical angles, and it's not going to hurt anything to say that that's 33 degrees. Um, but in either case, we're either looking at this straight line, or this straight line, and noticing that the 30 degrees and the, the angle that 33 degrees and the angle that we're looking for add up to 180. Right? They are what you call supplementary angles. They add up to 180. So this guy plus this guy have to be 180. So if I take 
180 and subtract 33, then I should find that 47 degrees. That's my guy right there. CFD is 47 degrees. Okay, for the last one, for number six, again, just going to erase all of this stuff. Almost all of it went away. There we go. Get our pen back. Um, 58 degrees. That's what AFB, AFB. So that's the same angle. Now we're calling it 58 degrees instead of 57 or 61. EFD. EFD. We kind of answered this sort of in the previous question, right? There's no direct connection between EFD and AFB. But AFB plus BFC is 90, which means that this must be 32 degrees. And BFC and our angle, EFD, are vertical angles. And so, vertical angles being equal, this is just a straight up 32 degrees. Easy enough. Right? So, I'll just move it along to the next question, number seven. All right, so this is like an advanced area problem. This is a sketch of somebody's yard, of Andy's yard. Uh, no big deal. We could even figure out the area of it easily. 27 times 16. Not being asked to show or draw anything here, right? So shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, 27 times 16, 432. All right, 432 one. Okay, 432 feet squared. Okay. So that's pretty cut and dry, pretty quick. Andy wants to fence in this section of yard and cover it with sod. So those are two different things. He wants to cover this whole area with sod, which is just sections of rectangular pieces of grass. That's all sod is. And fence. He wants to fence in the outside of it. Okay. So an astute observer may notice that, well, we have area, right, 432 feet squared, but the area is going to be measured differently. It's going to be measured in pieces of sod rather than feet squared. Uh, but the fencing is just exactly what the perimeter would be, right? How much feet of fence do we need? That's the perimeter of this area. Uh, might as well find the, the number of feet of fence because that's easy enough. We've got 27 plus 16 plus 27 plus another 16, however you want to figure that out. I'm doing 27 times 2 plus uh, 32, because that's 16 times 2. 86. 86 feet of fence. All right. Uh, well, you might think, oh, I'll just put 432, except for we want to know how many pieces of sod. Well, every piece of sod covers 6 square feet. So we don't need exactly 400, we don't like need 432 pieces of sod, that would be if one piece of sod covered one square foot. But each piece of sod covers six square feet, right? So I'm going to need fewer than 432. In fact, I'm going to need one-sixth as much as 432. So 432 uh, divided by six, we could put the units in there. This is feet squared. This is feet squared per piece of sod. Multiplying by the reciprocal, we'll find that the answer is going to be in pieces of sod. Okay, no problem there. 432 divided by 6. Give me just a moment. Moment. 72. How many sections of sod, pieces of sod? 72 of those guys. Okay. I guess technically I could have just put the number 86 here because the question, the answer is in feet of fence, but uh, I'm not going to count that against anybody. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. So we've done that before. Uh, we just did it on that distance question. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 9 plus 16, 25. That's equal to c squared. Take the square root. Square root of five is, or twenty-five is five. Ah, okay. So find the area and perimeter. Well, area is one half base times height 
So area is equal to 1 half times the base times the height. That's 1 half times 12. Right, 1 half of 12 is 6. 6 uh, centimeters squared. Uh, then find the perimeter. The perimeter would be just the distance around the outside, but we don't know the length of this guy here, except luck would have it, we just found for the exact rectangle. That's three on one side, four on one side, on the other side, right? And it's a right triangle. We know that X is going to be five. So the perimeter would be all the way around, five plus three plus four. Perimeter, by definition, is just the distance around the outside. So that's going to be... 12. 12, what? 12 centimeters around the outside. All right, here's another Pythagorean theorem question. Uh, well, here's the thing I was talking about earlier. We are given the hypotenuse. If you notice, 35 is the longest side. So when we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I'll write that here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is the hypotenuse, and so c squared is 35 squared equals a squared plus b squared. I could call 21 a or b. It doesn't matter. Let's solve for a plus 21 squared. Right? Uh, I don't know these numbers off the top of my head, so I grab my calculator. 441, that's 21 squared. a squared plus 441 equals 35 squared, which is 1,225. Uh, let me just double check that one. Okay, subtract 441 from both sides. Subtract 441, you get 784. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull out the old square root function, take the square root, and we get 28. Uh, oh, I was solving for A there. A, you don't have to write A, but I did, is 28. That's how long this side is. Okay, we still use the Pythagorean theorem, except for the hypotenuse was given. And so the thing we're solving for was actually either A or B. Moving along. Circumference area and circumference of the circle. Well, it gives us the radius, so I'll go ahead and say that area is equal to pi r squared, r is 11, squared, so that's 121 times pi. So just to round your answers to two decimal places, so I must be telling you to multiply 120 by, or 121 by pi, so 121 times, I should have a pi button, there we go, my calculator. And that's going to equal, rounding to two decimal places, 380.13 centimeters squared. Now I use the pi button on my calculator, uh, which gives me, I don't know, like 10 or so decimal places of pi. And so that's why mine might look a slightly different from yours. The circumference is equal to pi times 2r, or pi times d, right? Uh, the diameter of this guy, well, it's going to be from one side all the way to the other. Another radius would be 11, so 22 from end to end. This may kind of wig out on me here in a second. Uh, looks like we're crashing. All right, so I paused that recording. I did have a little bit of a crash, but uh, picking up where we left off, 22 times pi is going to be uh, close to 69.12 centimeters. Okay, so just using those formulas, pi r squared and pi times the diameter. Um, that is all there is to it. So now we can see a little more what's going on here. Um, okay, Peter has a pool in his backyard. This is like a maybe double advanced area problem. Um, 
first figuring out the area. That would be a helpful thing. So we got to interpret all this information here. He wants to cover the area around his pool in cement pavers, right? Those are just little squares of cement. Uh, they call those pavers. Uh, he wants uh, this area to uh, this area covered in pavers to be 11 feet wide on three sides of the pool. So there you can see a picture of it. Three sides of the pool have this this paver area, this walkway, if you want to call it. And he wants them to be 11 feet wide, right? That means like from here to here is 11 feet. And so is from here to here is 11 feet. And from here to here is 11 feet, right? All the way around. All right, well, that doesn't help me a lot because I don't know anything else. So let's find out more things. The short side of the pool, this visibly the short side, is 12 feet. So 12 feet. From here to here is 12 feet. So that automatically, without doing any other work, tells me that this whole side here is 12 feet plus 11 more feet. So that's 23 feet. Uh, the long side is 20 feet, so we'll just say from here to there, that's 20 feet. Okay, 20 feet. So that tells me that from here to there is 20 plus not only 11 plus another 11, 20 plus 22, that's 42 feet from one end to the other. So, um, so there's that, 42. Pavers are 24 inches by 24 inches, okay? Uh, all right, so first let's figure out the area that we're going to be covering in pavers and then figure out how many pavers we need. Um, I, I think it's pretty simple. What we have here is this uh, big rectangle and this little rectangle. little rectangle is, is not going to be covered in pavers. It's, it's full of water, right? So we're going to take that out of the big rectangle. So that looks like area of the big rectangle, 23 times 42, minus the area that this little rectangle takes out, which is a 12 by 20. Okay, I'm not going to pretend like I do those in my head. 23 times 42, that's 966. That would be the area if there were no pool there, if this was all brick pavers. But that's not the case. We have to take off this 12 by 20 area. That's 240. I'm going to subtract that 240 from that 966, 726. So it's 726 square feet that, that the pavers need to cover. Okay. So if it just asks for the area, boom, 726. But actually, this 24 by 24 paver is going to cover actually four square feet, right? Because from here to there is a foot. That's 12 inches. 12 more inches is two feet. There's another. So this is two feet by two feet. That's four feet squared, right? So one paver is going to cover four feet squared, right? So... Um, 726 divided by 4. I only need a, a fourth of the number of square feet because every paver covers 4 square feet. So let's see, is 726 nicely divisible by 4? It's not. We get 181.5, right? 181.5. Are needed, right? So that comes from finding the area of this this weird shape here, the C shape, uh, and then figuring that we only need a fourth as many pavers as we have square feet, and so we divide it into sections of four to figure out how many pavers we need, and we only need 181.5. All right. Next is very similar, except for only we have to worry about the area and not about pavers. And my favorite way is to break this up. This whole length here is 9 inches. This is 7, which means this must be 2 inches, which means this little rectangle is 6 square inches. 
This big rectangle here is a 9 by 7. 9 times 7 would be 63 inches squared. And if there weren't a big chunk missing out of it, we'd be done. But there is a big chunk of it missing. So how much of it is missing? It's 6 times 2, which I should have just written 12 inches squared. So we've got 63 inches squared plus 6 inches squared, except for we're missing 12 inches squared. So 63 plus 6 minus 12 equals uh, 77. 77 inches squared. Okay, find the following sum. We need common denominators. That's handy, right? 9 will be the common denominator, so we only have to multiply this one by some stuff. 3 over 3, so that's going to give us 6 over 9 plus 7 over 9 is 13 over 9, and that's fine. Or you could, if you wanted to, say 1 and 4 ninths. Okay, so either of those would be fine by me. I'm going to find the product of these two fractions. I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel. 11 is going to cancel 11. 11 divided by 11 is 1. Uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's 5 halves, and that sound is just the plumbing of my house. Uh, 5 halves. Good answer. Okay, so this guy here, I want to see that you just, you're just you familiar with the multiplication algorithm. All right, so quickly we'll do 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 20 is 400. Excuse me. I made that same multiplication earlier. The same multiplication error earlier. All right, it's 160. 30 times 0, of course, is 0. And 30 times 20 is 600. There we have it. So our final answer is going to be 660. All right. All right, this guy here. Actually, uh, I made a valiant attempt to, you know, I, I was grading a test, and uh, my oldest daughter, eight years old, asked, what is that? Right, what is this rectangle? And so we talked about uh, area. She didn't really know about area. She caught on to the idea of squares, different kinds of squares, mile squares and feet square, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, this is a little bit too much for her, but she's, she's eight. Um, but as we've discussed several times, uh, the, the rectangle is uh, an easy thing to find the area of, and it's a good, the area of that rectangle is a good model for, uh, for multiplication, right? So 27 times 35 can be modeled by a rectangle. If I were to draw a simple rectangle, that is 35 by 27. Right? But that is not any easier. What makes it easier is splitting it up. I don't know what's going on. Uh, right. All right, well, well, let's go ahead and use the eraser on this guy. And here we have the pencil. Okay, so this side's going to be 35. And what makes it easier, as I was saying, is that we split this side into 30 plus 5 and this side into 20 plus 7, right? Splitting it up by the tens and the ones. The area of this guy is, is a 7 by 5. That's a 35 squares that fit in there. 5 times 20, that's 100 squares. Uh, 7 times 30, that's uh, 210 squares. And a 30 by 20 rectangle holds 600 squares. Um, and if we add them all up, we get 600, 700, 800, 910, 945. 945, that's 27 times 35. All right, so I ask you to show or draw the volume of this given solid. So here is... Uh, I've drawn it the same way several times in a row. I'm going to draw it differently now. I'm going to say that along the bottom here is 12 centimeters. 12 centimeters. So 
I'm going to do my best to split it up into a nice, consistent 12 pieces. Uh, this side here is 10, so I'll try and split that up. 10, okay. What does that mean? Well, if I look at this layer of cubes, it's kind of looking like uh, water on the bottom there. It's just a bunch of cubes, right? Here's one of those cubes. Actually, the easiest one to see would be this one over here. There's one of those cubes. How many cubes can we fit along the bottom layer of this box here? Well, 12 cubes can fit along here, and I can put another row of them, and another row, and another row. I can put 10 rows along the side there. So I can fit 12 by 10, 12 times 10, on the bottom layer. So 12 times 10 is 120. It's 120 cubes sitting there centimeter cubes sitting there on the bottom of this box and I can stack another layer uh, shoot you know what I made a mistake there I read it wrong because what we can fit along the bottom a lot or along this side is not 10 but actually five so we should show five along the bottom there. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's not 12 times 10, of course. It's 12 times five. Times five. That's just half as many. That's 60 centimeter cubes that fit along the bottom there. So 12 this way, five rows of 12, that's 12 times five, is 60 cubes, 60 centimeter cubes that fit in the bottom layer here. I can fit another layer and another layer and another layer and another layer and another layer. And another layer. How many layers can I fit of those 60 cubes? I can fit 10 of those layers. Okay, so if every layer has 60 centimeter cubes in it, and I can fit 10 layers, that's 60 times 10. We could say 60 centimeter cubes per layer. That looks like lawyer, layer. Uh, times 10 layers equals 600 cubes, centimeter cubes. That's what I put here, 600 centimeter cubes. All right. Oh, please explain your answer. In other words, your answer is a number. It's counting something. What is it counting? It's counting cubes. What kind of cubes? Centimeter cubes. Simplify the expression as much as possible. This will be our last uh, question to answer. So I'll, I'll write that over here. Give myself some room. I am going to quickly explain this. Then you can just go back and watch this explanation over and over if you want. So let's just look at, uh, well, the order of operations tells us that we need to do, well, parentheses, but there's nothing to do in the parentheses. So we need to raise what's in the parentheses to this exponent because the exponents come first. Is it possible? It certainly is possible. We have z to the 12th inside the parentheses. That z to the 12th is raised to the third. What does it mean to raise something to the third? It means to raise it to, to multiply it by itself three times. Let's just draw that. There's the thing times itself three times. Okay, well, we can, we can just write z to the eighth, z to the tenth there. Okay, so let's further figure this out. What's inside each of these parentheses as z to the 12th? z to the 12th is here and here, and here, right? Something times itself three times, that thing that is multiplied by itself three times is e to the 12th. What does e to the 12th mean? Well, the, maybe raise something to the 12th power means to multiply it by itself 12 times. We have a z and a z and a z 
Z, 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 Z. We have 12 Zs in here. And 12 Zs in here. And 12 Zs in here. And we are multiplying all these Zs by these, all these Zs that are being multiplied together. And then we're multiplying a bunch of Zs together here. And we're multiplying everything. My point is we're multiplying all multiplication, no addition, no subtraction, nothing else but multiplying a bunch of Zs together. So all we have to figure out is how many Zs is that? There's 12 of them. There's 12 more. We're up to 24. 12 more. We're up to 36. That's it. That's how many Zs are being multiplied together right there. 36 of them. Okay, now we have uh, 8 Zs multiplied by 36 Zs. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Da, 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 da. I mean, I'm just going to have to write 36 Zs, right, all next to each other. Just guessing at how many 36 looks like. We've got, say, from here to here we have 8 Zs, and from here to here we have 36 Zs. Okay, so all together we have 44, that's not what I should do, Z to the 44. That's how many Zs there are being multiplied together, and that's what exponents are for, showing how many things are being multiplied together. So we have z to the 10th minus z to the 44. Uh, now that's it. We can't write anything else. We can't simplify it. It's not possible. right? It says as much as possible. And it's not possible anything beyond that because we have z to the 10th minus z to the 44th. They are not like terms. They are different things. They cannot be combined. Um, they're as different as apples and oranges, candles and nerf darts. They're different. They're completely different from each other. So they can't be combined, they can't be added, they can't be subtracted. That should be the last question, right? That's where the answer section starts. So that's it. Um, like I said, rewind any part that you need explained over and over. Um, feel free to watch this and then uh, to, you know, to prepare for a retake and retake. But thanks for watching.